Hi guys, uh, my name is Noah Mason. Uh, I'm a senior here at LSC. This is my third year of speech. And what I'm gonna be doing for all of you is a dramatic interpretation of these. Now, pretty much what this is, is a 10 minute cutting from a play, uh, it could be from books, like autobiographies, or you know, manuscripts from like uh, movies, or anything else of the sort like that. And of course, it has to be in serious or dramatic nature. So, yeah, don't know what else to really say, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started for you. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Okay. <laughs> statue over there? Well, that's Peter Stuyvesant. Let me tell you something about Stuyvesant, all right? He was the last director general of New Amsterdam before they fell to the British and became New York. You know he lost his right leg in battle? And everyone says he survived purely because of his faith. You know, this faith in what he knew was right in the world. I mean, not only is this man's story just, just fascinating to me, but this place, it's special to me. Stevenson Square. You know what, I'm not busy by any means. It's right here where I'll come to really take in this city. You know, and think about the students I teach. Students like Felicia. Maya Angelou once stated that prejudice is a burden that confuses our past, threatens our future, and renders our present inaccessible. And unfortunately, prejudice is all around us. And everyone everywhere experiences some form of prejudice in one way or another. After all, it is only human nature. And prejudice is something that Alan Harris, a young, passionate college professor, must strive to overcome after a brutal encounter changes the lives of not only himself, but his family too. He must embark on a journey of acceptance, ridding himself of his prejudices against those who do not deserve to be hated in White People by J.T. Rogers. Now Felicia, by the way, is just excellent. The best student I have. I mean, who else is gonna be in my office three to four times a week after class, you know, just punching holes in my lectures and and arguing with me back and forth and back and forth. Oh, but something about Felicia, though, is that she will just go off in these, these riffing episodes. I mean, it's like she's talking in this completely foreign language. You know, it, it's just words and, and terms and even whole phrases that I can't even understand. Like, uh, for example, uh, something like, uh, like sick, meaning good. You know what I'm talking about. Yo, man, that's sick. Okay. Well, who even decided that? I mean, who sat down one day and just said, you know, words such as luminous and exquisite? Well, they're falling a little short. Let's go with sick. Uh, uh, but it should be pointed out that between us, you know, exist such barriers. You know, like uh, the baggy pants. Uh, oh, and her name uh, is hung in gold block letters around her neck. You don't believe me, I'm not some old and ignorant man. And, and I hate to say this, but Whenever I look across my desk at Felicia, I mean, it's just the images that come flooding into my mind are our welfare queen, baby mom, prostitute. You know, and, and even after everything that's happened in this country, these are my archetypes for this, this brilliant, Yeah, 
yes, I know, I know, I know. Everything's supposed to have changed. You now we're all supposed to be so full of hope, huh? Things still happen. You know, and there is fear for a reason. My pregnant wife, Sarah, and I, we are out walking through the park here. When they came up from behind and, and stood in front of us, three black boys. And they had pants like Felicia's. And one of them they had a gold tooth. And they were rocking on the balls of their feet. And all before I knew it, I heard this scream. It was Sarah. And there's a hand in her purse. And, and then I could feel these fingers were in my pockets. And I remember seeing clothes and skin. And, and I could feel hands on my face. I could feel my hair pulling and, and punching my mouth and laughing. <laughs> laughing like this was a game. Like. <gasps> and Sarah's on the ground. <laughs> And they're kicking her in her stomach, and and she's trying to cover her stomach with her arms, but but they're just kicking her there. Let me go! And do they not know what they are doing? This is my wife, Sarah. Circle. Oh. Oh. <coughs> some damage to our baby. You see, we don't even have a name yet. Not, not till we're certain. So this morning, uh, I came out of service from St. George. Over at the old chapel next door, and I saw, you know, for the first time, the stone carving over the entrance. And you could make out. Fight the good fight of faith. And after taking some time off to be with Sarah, I had my first class. Felicia stayed after, of course. Wanted to go at me about my lecture. I opened my mouth, and my mind said, you filthy, dirty, ignorant. as soon as I could. I, 
Good. Good. Listen. I know I was just wondering if you were busy by any means this weekend. If you'd like to come to lunch with my wife and me. And she paused, looked me in the eyes, and said, that'd be sick. <laughs> you know, I have got to tell you, it is so important to really claim things back to always fight that good fight of faith. 